Welcome to this week's review, which is an archive review. Now, every video possibly may be somebody's first video. That being the case, I need to tell you that archive reviews are not the same as my normal reviews. The sort of thing I did last week, for example, the leak CDT CD transport I did last week, is my standard sort of template. And if you click above on the link, you'll see what I mean by that. No, this is an archive review and it's a little bit different. How is it different and why is it different? Well, again, click on this link and watch the first four and a half minutes and it will explain everything. But let's get back to this week's review. Now, this particular archive review I wanted to do because it's sort of unfinished business. It's sort of squaring of a circle, as it were, because it's a phono amplifier from IOTA. Now, Recently, I did a review of an IOTA turntable. Again, link above. There's an awful lot of links in this one, isn't there? So I originally did a review of this turntable around the same time as this phono amplifier. So in my own head, it's sort of unfinished business. So I wanted to include that here. This particular phono amplifier from IOTA is called the Median. And when I originally reviewed the Median, it cost 600 and 25 pounds and that price remains it's still 625 pounds now this particular phono amplifier is fully balanced and that's its main selling point now i asked nigel brown who's the boss of iota about the choice of going balanced for this particular phono amplifier and he explained and i quote balanced operation he said for both the input and output ensures the ideal means of handling the very vulnerable signal that vinyl reproduction represents with this phono stage it's possible to use any practical length of suitable arm cable without experiencing interference problems the same is also true of the output from the phono stage true differential balanced operation allows even extreme lengths of cable to be run once again without pickup or interference affecting the signal now that might be a little dry for some of you but i wanted to dwell upon that because well that's the reason that this phono amplifier exists that's the main selling point that's why you would want to buy it for the balanced operation which is all well and good and is on the face of it a very wonderful thing problem is or rather was i had no opportunity of grabbing a turntable with a balanced cable hanging off the tone arm in time for the median review i could have waited and waited and waited for the opportunity but i wanted to take a look at this phone amplifier so forgive me for not going the whole hog on this one so i was able to test the balanced outputs but i had to rely on your basic single-ended RCAs for the inputs. And this will be the situation that many of you will also find yourself in. So at least I can give you a report on that side of things. Now, before we go any further, I think it's time that we had a closer look. And welcome to the closer look section for the IOTA Median Phono Amplifier. Now, apart from the balanced inputs and outputs, the ground connector and power connector, there's not much to this particular design. That simplicity is generally a good thing, although there are hidden problems in terms of design. I did find a few issues. Allow me to preface that statement, though. The price of the medium phono amplifier is going to make it attractive to a lot of people who are looking for a unit under £1,000. Now, there's a lot of competition in this area. I've reviewed a few myself, the Tricord Dino, the Moon 110, LP version 2, the Pure Sound P10, the iFi Phono 2, and so on. With that sort of competition, any other phono amplifier hoping to get a foothold into the market has to think carefully about its inherent design in terms of sonics, yes, but also in terms of installation requirements and usability. Because of the nature of the price points, potential customers for a £600 or so phono amplifier will be potentially a mixed bunch. There will be experienced users in there, and there will also be inexperienced users looking to upgrade and learn more about the technology. Or there'll be beginners who know very little about the technology 
and don't really care to learn any more about the hardware because all they want to do is listen to music. The design issues I have with the Median centre around the inexperienced user. Firstly, the Phono amplifier utilises dip switches to set gain and loading. Now this is a necessary evil, I understand that, but it doesn't stop me detesting the things. They are finicky and sometimes require crossword skills to fathom out what switch goes where. Now I understand why they are used because they offer a more direct input which aids sound quality. Adding knobs and switches to a design at this price will either degrade the sound because the interfaces will necessarily be of a lower quality or if better switching is used the price will rise. All of the best phono amps in this price point and lower use dip switches so I can't really gripe about their inclusion. I can gripe about other areas though. Firstly, most phono amplifiers ask you to handle three or four banks of dip switches, but the IOTA asks you to mess about with six of the blighters. Secondly, the dip switch manual guide shows you what dip switch to throw and while it uses familiar ohm figures for loading, it uses the less familiar millivolt microvolt figures only for output instead of also including the generally used decibel figure. I know that using such a measurement sequence is fine and correct but I would say that the notion of gain is more commonly expressed and better understood in decibels. This would surely help the beginner get a rough idea what figures actually mean in the real world. I reckon that only using the technically correct microvolt millivolt approach will serve to confuse and strike uncertainty into the hearts of the beginner. Fine, include millivolt and microvolt figures if you wish, but why not also add the decibel figures too? Again, you will see the decibel figures included in both Moon and Tricord products. Project even uses the figures on its chassis or in its manuals or both. Thirdly, you cannot access the dip switches directly. What you've got to do is remove the outer casing of the chassis and once you're faced with a bare circuit board you have to alter them from there. Now I know there's a whole heap of audiophiles out there who will not blink at such a suggestion and will wonder what all the fuss is about but this hobbyist approach may scare the life out of some beginners or inexperienced users and may even lower the sales of this phono amplifier right there and then. The thought of unscrewing any hi-fi and touching any circuit board will be anathema to some. Even getting in the median chassis was another issue. The first time I did this the chassis stuck fast and wouldn't budge. I had to lever, push and pull and, because there was nothing else to hold, almost tug the feet off the chassis itself. Eventually the cover did shift and then trying the process a second, third and fourth time the chassis opened up perfectly with next to no pressure required. The issue here is an inconsistency which again might bother inexperienced users. What I wanted and what I've asked IOTA to do is add a window type slot in the chassis or even a screw down door to enable you to change the dip switches without removing the chassis. But when I did talk to IOTA about this they were adamant that sound would suffer. As such, this IOTA median design is pretty unforgiving for the beginner or the inexperienced user think twice before buying this product. For experienced users though, this determination to get the Sonics just right will be welcome and applauded while the installation will offer no problems. You take your choice. So how does this phono amplifier from IOTA, the median, how does it actually sound? Well, let's go to the sound quality tests and we'll find out. And welcome back to the sound quality tests for the IOTA Median Phono Amplifier. And I started the sound tests with the output cable as a single-ended RCA. I didn't use balanced to begin with. I'm going to use that a bit later on, but I just want to see how this phono amplifier performs wholly single-ended. So single-ended output to begin with. 
I started with a little bit of vocal jazz, just to see if this strict design ethos is actually worth it in sound terms. I played vocal jazz from Ethel Ennis and the album This Is Ethel Ennis on RCA and the track He Loves Me. Now on my first impression I was intrigued because there was something going on here. The iota had a particular way of presenting music to the ear. I found the vocal delivery detailed and well formed but possibly a little dry. The soundstage while relatively broad offered a contained approach with a certain reduction in air and space. It was detailed in general terms but tended to be a bit embossed in nature. Now I initially thought this sonic approach might be a problem but the more I listened the more I changed my mind. What the iota did in fact was to remove the distinctly romantic approach that many top phono amplifiers provide. That slightly dreamy swish of music with floaty strings, vocals oozing lip gloss and percussion with star twinkles emanating off the end of the drumsticks. This default Las Vegas approach to music is a lovely thing in itself but it's arguable if it's wholly and strictly realistic. It's a bit like someone walking onto a Hollywood film set and then turning off the wind machine and pushing over the backdrop and ripping away the costumes and dismantling the on-set furniture and turning off the lights before shouting there that's real life before storming off the set in a huff. So what I mean by that is the iota strips away the fanciful, it strips away the idyllic, it strips away the fantastic and instead squeezes three drops of realism with a sonic pipette onto your hi-fi. Because realism is what I'm hearing here. The vocal sounded live and unprocessed. The brass section had reverb but not extended reverb. Only what was available around the brass section. The bass offered a sense of foundation but nothing more than that. Realism was dominant, realism was prevalent, realism was everything. Now alongside the realism the iota provided a low noise presentation. Very low noise. Now the focus of this particular area of the sound tests focused on the piano. Now the piano ordinarily was so low key and pushed so far back in the mix it didn't even appear to be in the same room as the singer. Yet that piano's shy tinklings were never more present and correct than they were through the iota. The mid-range insight from this phono amplifier was quite phenomenal. I then changed the dynamic and moved to a slice of prog and Camel's Moon Madness from 1976. And I was pleased as punch to hear within the track Aristolus the high pitched synth sounds not sounding edgy and strident. That situation is an oft heard issue with this track. Not here. The iota had the issue covered and sorted. Also the bassy rhythm section had a real weight and focused approach. The track sped along very nicely. On the track Song Within a Song the vocal section was smooth while the harmony edition exhibited a little head vibrato which is a subtle and easily missed effect. The faster paced later section of this track offered excellent balance in terms of the overall frequency distribution. Now bass took a full part here, it didn't encroach on the mid-range or the treble but it was a big part of this mix. Okay now is the time to change that cable. Removed the RCA out and replaced it with a balanced out. So what did it sound like? Well I played Ethel Ennis again and <laughs> Uh, well, I actually did laugh when I heard this because back came the romance. The soundstage moved further left and right. The air and space around the orchestra was just swimming around the instruments. And the vocal dripped glamour. There was a starry-eyed sense of rhythm. All of that romance was back. And there was no actual negative to this approach. 
The balanced connections were nothing more than a sonic choice. The other being the relatively raw nature of the realism provided by the single-ended connections. But the balance cables did move the music to a smooth mid-range, characterful yet tonally rounded lower frequencies, and a slick and slightly glamorous suite of treble notes. The Camel track was exactly the same. The welcome neutrality remained, of course, and the sense of balance was a blessing on parts of this music, but while I think I preferred the slick, sweet approach to Ethel Ennis's music, I reckon I leaned more towards the single-ended approach when listening to rock from the iota. So just to confirm, when listening to jazz, I preferred the iota in balanced mode. But when I was listening to rock, I think single-ended was the way to go. It was that sense of bass grip and that slightly rough-edged mid-range, which appealed more on this dynamic track. But look, it's nice to have the option. So how do you conclude a review of this really quite unique and pretty complex design? Complex in terms of its build, complex in terms of its installation and use, complex in terms of actually listening to the thing. Well, firstly, IOTA will say that all of its effort and build budget has been pushed into sound quality and giving you more bang for your music book and all of that. In fact, given the choice, that's how I would design a phono amplifier of my own. I would probably be extreme in my design intents because to me, sound quality is all. Now, yeah, sound quality might be all and that might be my priority. But look, the median sits in a position on the market which is packed with competition. And that will mean that some users out there may miss out on the median's good points because of those design quirks. You feel like saying to the beginners and inexperienced users, look, just bear with it, give it a chance and you'll love it. Some will, others will shake a finger and won't even bother. And that will be their loss, but look, this is a business, it's not a charity. So it will be IOTA's loss as well, and that's arguably more important. For those who don't mind the quirks, or those that give the median a second chance, they will love the sound quality from essentially a two-in-one phono amp. And yes, I genuinely believe that what we've got here is basically two phono amplifiers in one product. You basically have two sonic envelopes on offer here, and I can see benefits from both solutions. As it stands, the IOTA Median offers a pretty exciting sonic performance, and I urge you to at least give it a try. And if you do want to give it a try, I will put links in the description, and that's where you'll also find links to my Patreon page, which has recently been revamped, and there are some exclusive videos now on my Patreon, along with all the other stuff which you can get for a much lower price these days. There's also links to my social media platforms where I hang out. There's also my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. And don't forget my website, which is packed with lots of content you don't see on this channel. I want to thank you for your continued support and for helping this channel to grow. And if you don't mind, if you could keep that going just for a bit, please, and click on the like button and also the subscribe button. That would be very nice of you if you could do that for me. And keep a look out for the community tab, if you would, because I'll be placing news and updates there as well. But until next time, guys, bye-bye for now.